is a fundamental issue which I raise with you. To what extent is the discrimination by the management of the financial institutions in Barbados between a difficult class of borrowers with respect to risk, in essence? Is there evidence to support the allegation that potential borrowers with similar risks are charged different interest rates? That is a question which the financial community has got to address because it strikes at the harm of discrimination. It strikes at the heart of discrimination. No one can tell me why is it that in Barbados, a businessman of my complexion never gets a second chance. Never gets a, I don't know the second one who's had a second chance. If you fail once at the end of it. Is there insider trading within the financial institutions in Barbados? Why is it that a certain clique of people usually get advanced knowledge of opportunities for acquiring assets which are to be sold by the financial institutions? It can't be luck. <laughs> These are issues which you have to, to answer. Is there adequate protection for small shareholders in Barbados? And the answer is no. I remember the period I felt, I think, in the late 1990s, when Island Properties in Barbados was bought out by two of the shareholders. That situation is exit then remains unchanged today. If, as I'm hearing, Republic Bank is interested in acquiring 100% of the shares in form of BNB. It means that the plans of small shareholders who would have tried to divide some retirement portfolio, that, that plan is disrupted. People are focusing on the shares held by the government and the shares held by the NIS. Nobody is facing the problem which we confront the small shareholder who bought those shares some years ago as part of retirement portfolio. You don't hear that voice is because, in my view, the reason is those people don't matter. That is a matter which we have to address. The question, another question which I want to raise in the next couple of minutes. Within the financial institutions, is there adequate protection for the elderly and those who are handicapped? For me, it's a nonsense to ask somebody at the age of 70, 75 to be reading a computer printer. You are asking that, you, you're exposing that person to this. Somebody who's handicapped, who's not that smart. So, you send that person a computer printer every month or so. And for me, it's a risk. A risk to which those persons should not be exposed. Quickly, is it fair to the clientele, the financial institutions, that some financial services corporations publish the annual reports within the, whole, within the context of a holding company, where you cannot differentiate between what is happening to the domestic financial institution and the holding company, which will be global. And this is true for credit unions as well. And I would advise you 
if you purchase your member of credit union. Never allow your credit union to publish a financial statement in the context of all the company. I am a founder member of a credit union, and I will fight till the last breath is drawn is gone if my credit union attacks that. Because it violates the principles of transparency and accountability. The commission has a most unenviable task getting on top of these pension plans because this is the first time in my business that we're regulating. Um, so the first thing is to guarantee that we start at the two and satisfy the two is building that database which allows them to uh, regulate the industry. You cannot regulate what you don't know. The second, you raise the second question. Um, it's protection of um, shareholders, pensioners. We have to, to amend the Companies Act to protect small shareholders. Right now, sh small shareholders have no rights. Once the bonds is a take over, and, and uh, we reach the threshold of 90%, the other 10%, the holders of the other 10% have no choice. Right? So I am content that if you're serious about building an economic democracy in Barbados, and I know this a term which a lot of people like to use, all I mean by it, if you want to expand the class, property owning, property owning class in Barbados, you have to protect the small shareholders. And I don't understand why is it the political directorate and such people have been in government over the last five years. They have done nothing to address that issue. My experience with credit cards in Barbados is sad, and I do not blame the young staff, in very big opinions, at the front As soon as, as soon as I can speak my experience, I don't know anyone who has experience. As soon as I go to the bank to settle the credit card debt, the first thing asked me, minimum balance. I said, I don't, I don't want to be free to visit your institution. I paid off the, the, the balance on that time leaving. And uh, I read something out of there. It is to the interest, <coughs> the interest of the credit card issuer to have the customer pay minimum balance because for the next time, five, thirty years of pain, you never get out of debt. It is like the experiences poor people in Barbados went through with the advent of the itinerant Asian salesman. When you would pay, when you made five payments, the payments were small, you almost paid for the product rate, but you paid for the next 30 or 40 years. You are locked into Trump. And I wonder if the issues of the credit cards ever take time to explain to the unsophisticated use of that card what are the consequences for the quality of their lives when they are persuaded that they should take minimum balance. And the wise thing for national insurance, in my view, to be doing is investing, saying to the government, we want to invest part of our surplus in the high end of tourism. And why is it high end? If you notice, in the worst of times, I don't want to advertise for any companies, so I'm not going to call companies. The high end of tourism in Barbados does well. That is the only segment of the sector which at good times around Christmas we turn it away, people. You see it, uh, the doors of God saying, we are failed. It makes sense to push resources, the sum of the surplus and national insurance into that in the market for two reasons. More people are going to be employed directly in construction, but more people will be employed the contributions based on national insurance will expand because as to strengthen the foreign exchange earnings in the country, you are able to support construction. Construction is one of the quickest generator of jobs. If you are weak, if your foreign exchange earnings are weak, 
you'll be fooled, you'll be a fool to go and push for expansion and construction because overnight the hospital will not be able to buy medicines. So I, I'm for it, but it has to be carefully programmed because it is a win-win situation for national insurance. This folly of putting the insurance money into CDs, these short-term things, I don't agree with it. You keep just seeing that, and Mr. Guarantee would know, over a three, four month period, this is the flow. This is the inflow. So you study that and say that this is a safe level in the portfolio for liquid assets. 